E360 TV proudly presents Messages of Inspirational Stories TV show. Live streaming now to millions of devices around the world on Roku, Apple TV, Amazon Fire TV, Android TV, YouTube Live, Facebook Live Streaming. Our shows are available video on demand on these channels. And we broadcast daily Monday through Friday at 4 p.m. Eastern Time on these channels. On Mondays, Expanding Your Business. Tuesdays, Finding Health Naturally. Wednesdays, Mentoring Our Youth. Thursdays, Pets We Love. And on Fridays, Women in Leadership. Brought to you by our producers and hosts, Jim Grant and Donna Guimwa. Along with our host, Bieta Severin Reed and Emerson Brantley. Supported by our admin team of Michaela Vidal and Gaia Guinoa Balcone Weda. And welcome to the show, ladies and gentlemen. The Messages of Inspiration and Hope is proudly brought to you today by the good guys at the 6minutewebinar.com. And our guest today is Mr. Jerry Foster. Donna, as you can see, she's behind the scenes working with them. Jerry is 82 years of age, and he's got a lady there helping him get on, you know, get the computer going and get that going. And... But Jerry, if you lived in Phoenix, Arizona in the early 70s, you knew who Jerry was. You absolutely I'm a, I'm, did. I'm a, oh, okay, good deal. You're there, huh? <laughs> I mean, tell, tell the audience a little bit about Jerry. Well, I was seven years old when he uh, came on the scene as a helicopter pilot here in Phoenix. And... <laughs> I got to tell you, it was amazing, even as a young child. And then, of course, he was on the air for, gosh, well over two decades. But the the things he did was unprecedented at that at that time. I mean, Mm -hmm. he did he did search and rescue um, out in the desert looking for people who were lost. Um, He would go out when we'd have our massive floods that we get here in Arizona and when somebody was stuck in the river and they couldn't get out, he was known to go in in his helicopter and use the the feet, whatever you call them, but the, the feet, runners. Thank you, the runners, and have mm-hmm. them grab on to pull them out of the river. It was crazy. I mean, mm. it, nobody had seen anything like that before. Nobody. Oh, yeah. You say he's in the back room. I don't see him yet. We're, we're going to keep uh, on till we get Jerry here. But I'll tell you something, ladies and gentlemen. Imagine a guy. He's hired by cool. Was it uh, cool? A radio station. Cool. The first. Heli- yeah. The first helicopter pilot in the state of Arizona. And I've got to ask him. I'm dying to know when he when he got the job there to fly the helicopter around. You know, how did it migrate to where he was involved with police chases? He was involved in pulling people out of rivers. I mean, he was uh, Senator Barry Goldwater simply said that Jerry Foster could do things with a helicopter that no one else in their right mind would do. (laughs) But he does it very well and very safely. (laughs) We're going to try to get. And Senator Goldwater was no stranger to flying helicopters either. 
Oh, no, not at all. He was an accomplished uh, Air Force pilot. If you just Google Jerry Foster, you can see his name there, Jerry Foster in Phoenix, Arizona, and read the different articles on him about what he did during his life, you think, oh my gosh, how is this guy even alive today? There was one 19-year-old girl, uh, she was a college student, the raft she was in had overturned, and a couple of the people in there had, uh, they had actually, you know, drowned and he brought that ch chopper in there with a, another police officer hanging on to the runner and they reached down and get her and you know they pull her up out of the river and he gets her close enough to the bank you know lose the grip of her but at least the folks on the side were able to, to pull her out and then he lands the helicopter he goes over and gives her cpr this guy is just a helicopter pilot for a radio station i mean he was a huge celebrity in that day and time. And you think about all of the things that he did in his life, all of the rescues he went on, uh, pulling people out of flooded rivers. And he actually uh, did, had to ditch a chopper in a river like that one time. So we're, we're just anxiously awaiting to get him on because his stories and his him, him sharing his stories is much better than me sharing with you what I read. I remember a little bit about him because I lived in Arizona in the early 70s, but him being up in Phoenix and me being down in the southeast corner of Arizona in the Cochise County, uh, as you might see in my background there, that's the mountains, uh, the Mule Mountains, it's called in Bisbee, Arizona. Uh, that's where the, the area I lived in. And I tell you, he was, he was big time. And Donna's on the phone with him right now, as you can see. And my goodness gracious, you know, when it comes to him, I just got to read another little article here with you while we're there. And I mean, he was uh, he was a television broadcaster. Uh, the veteran uh, Ken Danta and him, they Dana, excuse me, Kent Dana, they spoke together. And Jerry is extremely well known, well liked, well respected. Um. They spent 30 years on the air internet field in 1974, then Cool TV. And then they spent 25 years at 12 News before retiring in 2011. And it's amazing what they did during their lifetime. Um, I, just, I just can't wait to hear his story. And I want to make sure that uh, I'm able to, you know, get him on here because, oh, there he is. Had the screen. There he is. There he is. Hi, Jerry. Well, hello there. <laughs> we had a heck of a time with all this technology. You know, I tell you, I was telling uh, Donna before the show that it's easier for you to get five or six helicopters in the air before you got on this show, huh? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're not kidding. Well, I'm happy to be with you. Thank you for having me. Jerry, oh, it's well, our well, pleasure. Yeah, it really is. I remember hearing a little bit about you there because I lived in the southeast corner of Arizona in the, in the 70s and 80s mm. and a little town called Bisbee, south of Tombstone there. Oh, sure. Oh, yeah. And, my, grandma uh, was, my grandma was from Duncan. Oh, okay. Wow. Yeah. Absolutely. But I got to ask you one question. When you first got hired, hired on us, the... Uh, as a pilot, a helicopter pilot for the radio station. What kind of uh, rules did they give you? I mean, how did you migrate into becoming a real life hero and a <laughs> with police chases and saving people from, <laughs> how did that all happen? <laughs> well, it all started uh, in 1969 when the Department of Public Safety um, added helicopter, wanted to add a helicopter to their operation I was hired as a chief pilot, and we ran that operation for about eight months and proved that we could operate a helicopter in the United States the way they were doing it in Vietnam. Right. By, you know, in other words, if somebody was hurt in one of our rural areas, we could go out there and get them and give them some first aid and then fly them into the hospital. And then uh, that morphed into all over the country, you know, where mm -hmm. they're doing, you know, these, this rescue stuff. And uh, I had been flying a helicopter for uh, radio and TV, 
mm-hmm. when I first got there. So I had about 10 years experience and I was the only helicopter, uh, TV helicopter in the country. But um, we got our first um, big break when we uh, got the first live unit for a helicopter to go live. And uh, we did that here, and you probably saw that since you were here in the 70s, 80s. And then uh, from then on, all over the country, they had pilot reporters, and um, they really worked out great. You know, the uh, the helicopter was just what the TV people needed, the TV news. And, of course, mm-hmm. today we've been replaced by a drone. Yeah. So, you know, that's, uh, that's kind of how it started. And then mm-hmm. one, uh, one hot day, it was 110 degrees, I found a grandma and three little children that had died out in the desert when they got stuck in a sand, a sand, a sand gully. And uh, mm-hmm. it just, uh, it broke my heart and it made me know that you have to have that helicopter ready to go and uh, you can save lives. That was that was a tragedy. But uh, so now when somebody gets lost out in the desert or in the mountains or wherever, uh, we have helicopters available to go out and help them. Mm. It's really amazing because I served in Vietnam in 1969, 1970. I'm very familiar with the what the helicopters could do over there. And those pilots, my goodness gracious, they were very brave, number one, very, very good at what they did, number two. And number three, they were a very welcome sight and a noise hearing that whoop, 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 coming towards you from those Hueys. And uh, yeah, I remember... Uh, I don't remember, but back in 1975, I think it was, as you were saying how everything started there and it migrated across the country, Dr. Red Duke here in Houston, he created uh, Life Flight to go out and, you know, and pick up people and, you know, been in accidents and whatnot and rescue people. And that's just been a tremendous blessing, hasn't it, sir? Well, sure. And, you know, he, uh, they, that's what I'm saying. We did that uh, Department of Public Safety Highway Patrol helicopter, and that just started the whole thing around the country. And helicopters mm. have been saving lives ever since. Oh you yeah, know, absolutely. An airplane can fly anywhere. A helicopter can fly anywhere and land. That's yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was sure. There's another. There's another saying. There, there's another saying too. Um, air, people fly airplanes, and pilots fly helicopters. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> yeah, I like that. That might oh, work yeah. with a few feathers. <laughs> yeah, and there's another one, a little no. saying that says, um, All helicopter pilots must be accompanied by an adult. <laughs> you know, that's exactly oh, right. Because I know a lot of guys, even in Vietnam, say, You know, I heard one guy, I remember saying this, he says, when, when I'm out there in the boonies, he says, the, the type of helicopter pilot I want coming after me is the crazy guy because <laughs> he won't leave me. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> right. Yeah. I just had the best career a man could hope to have. I had my, I had my troubles because I was the first. And, you know, law mm-hmm. enforcement and news, and news media didn't get along back in my day. Uh, yeah, because they just didn't. But uh, I happened to um, be the first one to come along, and uh, I had to work my way into law enforcement. When they finally realized that, hey, I was the only helicopter in the state, uh, and um, wow. that is a news helicopter. So, you know, they, I, I was their first call, the sheriff's office call here for almost 20 years. Wow. And uh, I just loved it. There is nothing in this world that beats saving a life. Or saving oh, someone, helping someone who's injured. You know, it's just incredible. Well, Jerry, tell us about, if I'm all right, didn't you end up dumping one of your helicopters in the river? No. Didn't one had dump in the river? No. Or did part of it dip in? Well, you have a picture, I think, of um, the helicopter over a lake or over a river, mm-hmm. and there's a young girl hanging from the skid. Do you have that picture? We do, but we don't have it up here on the on the thing. Okay. I can put no, in the description. No, I, I, um, okay, so no. Uh, next question. I lost it. And don't forget, <laughs> I'm 80 years old. Also. 
That's okay. We act like we're 80 sometimes because we is, is, if you act serious, they'll, they'll know you're crazy. Sure. But you know. Well, you Donna, know, being serious all the time is no fun. Oh, yeah. You know, the, the story that I read there in an article where the little 19-year-old girl, uh, she was in uh, a raft and it overturned and you and uh, yeah, I think you had a police officer on the runner and you, yeah. Would you share that with us, sir? That was uh, some ASU students or, or U of A students in Tucson were going mm -hmm. down the Salt River on a rafting trip. And uh, they didn't know that there was a small dam, 12 foot high dam down river. And uh, they two rafts went over that. As I recall, three people drowned. Two people got to uh, the shore. And one girl, you know, on a waterfall, it goes over and makes a burble when it comes up. Mm -hmm. And uh, that raft of hers, she was the only one in the raft, and the raft was in this burble and couldn't come out. So they called the state troopers, and the state troopers called me, and uh, we both went out to this uh, uh, spot on the river. And this little girl was bouncing around in there. She was about 19 years old, and uh, she just she didn't have a, a life preserver on, but a rope had wrapped around her neck that was tied, or wrapped around her arm that was tied to a uh, life preserver. So she just finally got so tired and I was hovering right above her and, uh, and she finally just went out of the raft and disappeared. But we saw that life preserver floating. Turns out that she was tied to it. So I put uh, the trooper down in the water, put the belly of the helicopter in the water and he was able to grab her by the arm, uh, by the wrist and uh, we took her over to shore. And uh, it was incredible. We, uh, she had already died because this whole thing took about three minutes. We got her on the beach, gave her um, CPR, and got her going. And uh, I'm going to tell you something. She threw up in my mouth twice, and not, I didn't even know it. That's how, mm. that's how intense that was. But mm. today, she's a, she's a mother of two, living the good life, and that just makes me so proud and so happy. I can just get tears in my eyes thinking about it. Oh, yeah. I imagine I you, you, do you stay in touch with her or she stay in touch with you from time to time? Or? From time to time, yeah. Yeah. But she's a little embarrassed over it. But she's very grateful, I'll tell you. Oh yeah, sure. You bet. I mean, my goodness gracious, because that's a that's a very special bond that you've earned and you've got there. My goodness gracious, to be able to save a life. I mean, you know, Donna, that's one of the things that we encourage people here on the show to be able to use their God given talents and gifts to be able to reach out and help someone. You may not be performing CPR on them, but you certainly may be helping them in their hour of need because everybody needs help. We're social creatures. And sure. uh, Absolutely. yeah. Well, it can even be yes. as simple as, as holding the door or, or a smile or helping somebody with their groceries at the grocery store, getting them in their car. You don't know what kind of day somebody's had or what's going on in their life. And that may be the, the ray of sunshine they need to lift them up. Oh, you got it. You got it. Um, you know, there's just a, a, go ahead. I'm sorry. Uh, go ahead. That's okay. That's well, you know, I, one of the reasons that we were successful with our helicopter is because I had a rule. I made a rule for myself and for my crew. I had a photographer and a, um, a, a little gal producer who was helping us out. And uh, we, we, just, um, we just had it. Now, law enforcement agencies knew they could call me any time of the day or night, and we would be in the air in 20 minutes. We never turned down a call, and we never missed a call. And uh, what wow. that took, that just takes dedication. And my cameraman and my producer, we all were on the same page. And that's that's wow. really so good about Skype. That is incredible. Oh, yeah. yeah. It really is. is. I mean, well, especially. In that, kind of work, in that kind of work, you know, when when – the sheriff's office calls you, or the, or the troopers. You know, you've just got to, uh, you've got to get there quick. Minutes count. Yes, and, uh, they sure do. 
Yeah, yeah they do. They really do. You know, I was reading uh, about Dr. Red Duke in Houston, and a lot of people do not know do not know anything about him. Uh, but Dr. Red Duke, he was uh, in the fourth year of his internship when President Kennedy uh, got assassinated in Dallas. And he was on duty there. He was the first doctor that saw President Kennedy, but all the other senior doctors just swarmed around him. And he says, uh, you know, they were, you know, taking care of the president. And I looked over and here's Governor Conley. Nobody's paying any attention to him. So I went over and helped him. And he became uh, Dr. Conley's uh you know, real good friend, obviously, and a personal uh, physician with him. But uh, he was the one that was very instrumental and had the vision uh, to start, you know, the Life Flight program here. And, of course, now it's all over the place, and which is a wonderful thing because, you know, America and a lot of people, in fact, my son-in-law survived a very tragic accident thanks to Life Flight, the helicopter. So a lot of people, you know, the things that you did, and I got to I gotta say what Barry Goldwater said about you, <laughs> you know, in just a moment, but the things that you did, you set the standard and you set it high. And I remember Barry Goldwater, uh, you were saying, and correct me if I'm wrong on this, Jerry, you were saying that you're going to fly him and Senator Dennis Deaconcini somewhere. And you were a little concerned because he was such an accomplished pilot. And you said, would you like to have the left seat? And he said, yes. And uh, Senator Goldwater says that, you know, you could do uh, things with a helicopter. No one else could in their right mind. And he said, but he does it very well. And it's also very safe. <laughs> I see, That's amazing. Yeah. That was just 1969. Wasn't that 1969, Jerry? Yeah, something like that. When yeah. you, <laughs> yeah, you were flying them to Gila Bend. Oh yeah, that's right. Uh, there was a mid-air collision yeah. down there, and uh, we had gone down there, and uh, so then after that, you know, we dropped. He, he uh, called me and said, "Jerry, I'd like you to teach me to fly a helicopter." So I did that, and. Uh, he was a very good student, I tell you. And then I had so many good adventures with uh, with Senator Goldwater, and um, he's just he was just a wonderful man. Oh yeah, did you show him any tricks that a helicopter could do? He wasn't aware of. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think I did. I think I did. Uh, <laughs> we did. We did a lot of things. Like there was this big funeral for. Uh, Senator Carl Hayden, who died here in Arizona, and mm -hmm. uh, he, his uh, memorial was at the uh, ASU uh, big building there, and the, pre the idea was that Senator Goldwater was going to be a speaker, and President Johnson was going to be a co-speaker, and so when Johnson's helicopter landed at the ASU stadium, I was supposed to wait until he took off and uh, didn't land and uh, didn't have a car take Barry. And so when we got over the Great Damage Auditorium, Barry says, look, I want to beat him. Because remember, they ran for president against each other, and Barry lost by a landslide. So he said, I want to beat him there. Can you land right there? And I said, Senator, if I land right there in the grass next to the Coliseum where all those people are, I'm going to lose my license. And he says, do it. I'll take care of it. So I did it. <laughs> and, and I got in a hell of a lot of trouble, I'll tell you, but he got me out of it. And <laughs> perfectly safe place to land. I have all that stuff in my book. And uh, it was, I was oh, so, yeah. I was so worried about well, writing it. Uh, yeah, I was so worried well, about writing I just writing. wanted to say that. <laughs> Go ahead, Jerry. I was just so, uh, I forgot what I was saying. Let's do something else. That was my story. <laughs> but we had all kinds of well, I just wanted to say that, you know, you have three books to your credits. Uh, you have Earthbound Misfit, Life Focus, and Small Changes, Big Results. So, you know, not only are you the first hel news helicopter pilot in Arizona um, for over two decades and did some incredibly harrowing Feats. I mean, I remember as a little girl watching the news and, and you were out on a rescue and my dad would say, 
look at that crazy man doing that stuff. <laughs> but, it, you know, it was stuff that wasn't even seen in movies back then. Right? We didn't have that kind of thing in movies back then. And here mm -hmm. you were doing it on, live on air. It was crazy. Yeah. Yeah. It was crazy. I mean, you had the people in Hollywood wishing they could do things with stunts that you were doing live on TV, my man. <laughs> Yeah, you know, I signed up two years ago, or they asked me to sign up for a movie with uh, at um, Amazon Studios in Hollywood, mm -hmm. and so we did all the paperwork and they paid me this and that. And then uh, when the pandemic came up, they canceled the movie. Mm -hmm. So, so much for that. But yeah. I think uh, I'm so happy. I'm just so blessed. And um, uh, we've we've got a viewer that made a comment. Uh, Dave, um, I may mispronounce his last name, Bomer, I guess it might be, B-O-E-H-M-E-R, Dave Bomer. Uh, he says, Jerry Foster has been such a blessing to the people of Arizona, a true hero. So I got to give, uh, Dave, thank you for writing that in. And Jerry, this is a clap for you too, brother. I mean, I got I got to salute you too, brother, because you're a former Marine now, aren't you? I am, yes. Yeah. You that came from... That is in my book, by the way, and uh, I had a bad start as a young man, and I had I had some I had some skeletons in the closet, and uh, that's why I worked so hard because uh, I wanted to make up to my mother and dad for being such a bad boy in in my younger days. <laughs> so that's in my book, and uh, I feel good that I've uh, I've just laid my whole life out there, and I'm just the most blessed guy that you ever know. <laughs> I hear you. I know exactly what you mean, because, uh, you know, a lot of the people that we have on as guests, they um, they've overcome a lot of tragedy in their life. And uh, we've had several ladies that's been on who were, you know, used and abused at a very young age and that they rise from the ashes. They write about their story. And some of them have started nonprofits to help you know, other young ladies who have to, who went through things like that. And that is really a blessing. That's how you, you know, also you can use your disadvantages in life to connect with people who, you know, can relate to you. And uh, that's very important in life, isn't it, Donna? It is. And the beautiful thing about that is, you know, I believe everybody goes through something in life. Everybody has a story, right? And whether or not you give it power to ruin you or you take that power back and say, watch this, I got it. And you don't own me anymore. And you, you take go. that power back and you rise. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, rough starts aren't, aren't a big deal, Jerry. I mean, plenty of people have them. <laughs> yeah, I'm very, I'm very. So blessed. I. Yes, you are. So I have a question for you. Sure. What did you get? I'm just curious because, you know, what you did, of course, as we said, was just unseen, unheard of. And at, at that time, what did you get in the most trouble for uh, with the news station regarding uh, the helicopter? I think the, the, like, the biggest you know, like was, damage uh, or... Oh, I just uh, there's a dozen things I could tell you. I mean, uh, <laughs> I never I never had a problem at the station. My problems were all out in the field, and especially in the first uh, first ten years of broadcasting, because uh, it was a first. We didn't have a. I, I saw you say right. something about I beat my own drummer, something like that. That's yeah. what I had to do because there was no there was nobody to follow, nobody to say, hey, should we do it this way or do it that way? So yeah. I did right. it my way. And some of it wasn't right, but you know, you make mistakes, and uh, it turned out very good. I, uh, yeah. I'm, yeah, pleased I'm, to be, I'm pleased to be in a senior center. Uh, yeah. You know, nobody thought I'd make it to a senior center. You know, help <laughs> But here I am. Okay, yeah, I tell you, yeah, you'd probably outlive all those that probably didn't think you'd be there in the first place. <laughs> Well, you know, it, it was the, my career was two-sided. 
uh, I had people who loved me, and I also had people who didn't. And, uh, you know, sometimes, uh, and particularly with a helicopter, you make a lot of noise. And I couldn't tell you how many people I have woke up in the middle of the night or from dead sleep because that helicopter was so noisy. And, you know, sometimes you'd have to, you have to land in, uh, uh, in occupied space. And, uh, and, and especially when in the daytime when there was little, like a little kid would fall in the swimming pool and they'd call for a helicopter and off I would go. And, uh, you know, hopefully we would save the kid. Mm. But he, he had the opportunities to do it. That's what counted. Oh, yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. And uh, I tell you, it's, it's really a blessing to be able to do that and, you know, just to be able to help someone in their hour of need. Show us that helicopter you went and got there, Jerry. It is a little beauty, I tell you. I call this, our, the, our crew called this the dog, D-A-W-G, mm. because this little helicopter never failed us, never let us down, and did everything that I needed to do, including putting it in in a river right up to the belly, and that little girl was hanging off with of skid. And uh, I tell you, and then after, before I retired, I got this seven passenger helicopter. So now with this, all I had, I could uh, pick up the whole slot team instead of just one deputy. Uh, mm. And uh, I, I just had, so I oh, couldn't have yeah. it better. Yeah. But you started out in a, in just a, what, a two seater helicopter? When you no, first started, I started out? out? No, 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 no. I, I <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. I love oh. it. This, <laughs> this is a gyroplane. That's what I started. Mm. See, the radio station hired me to fly this. And I got mm. the radio station also had a TV station. And I learned how to shoot my own film and, you know, work, be on TV. So I went from the radio station to TV with this. But after a while, we, we only had this for about a year. And then we went to a helicopter. But, um, okay. Okay. <laughs> you know, the thing, yeah. listening to listen to you talk there, Jerry, I mean, you're very inspiring because you were, you know, like we said in the title there of the show, uh, you know, flying to the beat of your own drum. And uh, it's very important for an entrepreneur, someone that's trying to get something going. Don't be afraid to be yourself. You got it. Right. And answer the call when the when, kind of like the fighter when the bell rings you answer the call you know, and so what if you get hit in the nose a couple of times it's a fight right, <laughs> but but you don't quit and you know I tell you Jerry it's just amazing like the gentleman who spoke earlier sent in a comment if anyone out there like to you know type in a comment to Jerry please let us know. He says, Jerry Foster has been such a blessing for the people of Arizona, a true hero. Not only a blessing for the people in Arizona, but the standard he set. Absolutely. Boomeranged all over the United States and the world because, you know, think about all the helicopters that respond to people in their hour of need and think of the thousands of lives they've saved. Amen. Oh, my goodness. Absolutely. And how many people you you inspired to do what you do? Oh, I Look know how many that. people yeah. you inspired. That is incredible. And they grew up to say, I want to be just like Jerry and I want to go out and save people. But that is just that is just beautiful. Mm -hmm. I just love her enjoyed, What we enjoyed doing the most in the school visits. We went mm -hmm. to approximately 3,000 schools in Arizona during my career. And uh, I, I am on Facebook now with many of those students that I visited. Some of them are pilots, but they all say, I decided to do this or that when you visit us. And uh, oh. Oh, man, what, what an honor to be able to watch the kids grow up that you visited and to hear them express uh, a love for you. And that's what it is, we have a love. Oh, yeah. A lot of people. And I'm so happy. Facebook has just been one of the best things uh, to be able to reach out to friends and people. Mm -hmm. So I keep saying it, but I'm just, I had such a good career. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And Donna, would you do me a favor, please? 
when we come out to Phoenix, because we're going to bring our buddy, Mr. Marty Haggard, out there, and we're going to have us a hoot nanny. We got to have Jerry. We'll we'll make sure we come by and get Jerry and pick him up and bring him over there. And either that, he can come by and pick us up in the helicopter and we'll go. (laughs) Listen, you wouldn't want to fly with me today in the helicopter because I, I don't see. Uh, <laughs> well, you know, I just, I just, I just <laughs> you mean there's know. more, you mean there's more to it? And okay, uh, a little bit more to left there, Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> there's a little more left. Yeah. yeah, I hear you, brother. I hear you. But no, we would love to have you out there, you know, as our guest. Absolutely. And uh, it'd be a, an honor for me to meet you, too. I mean, I, I really mean that from the bottom of my heart because I know you and Donna are good friends and, and uh, she just she she's been wanting to get you here on the show for how many weeks now, Donna? <laughs> oh my gosh, it's been a couple. It's been at least two, three months. We've been we I first talked about it and said, you know, we got to have Jerry on. He he's yeah. an Arizona legend. I mean, oh, really yeah. you are. You're an Arizona legend, Jerry. Yeah. And you know, I mean, I grew up here, and I can remember seeing it on TV, and. You know, we were like, we were all glued to the TV, you know, live from, you know, cool TV, radio, whatever. And and we're like, uh uh-uh, because we knew what those rivers do, right? When they flood, they flood in in a nanosecond. They go from a dry creek bed to a raging, roaring monster of water and debris that comes down there. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's wicked. And so what you've done is absolutely just beautiful. And I wanted to be able to, you know, I talked to Jim and I said, Jim, I said, we've got to honor Jerry for what he's done for Arizona. Oh, yeah. He's done his country. Mm hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Because, you know, uh, living in Arizona there, then in Bisbee, when it would rain, it would take a while for the river or for the water to come down into the wash. But when it does, it's a wall of water. It just don't start creeping down and start rising. It's a wall of water. And I remember one time the, the creek there overflowed and we were getting our furniture out of the out of the way, our lawn furniture to save it. We didn't get all of it because the water was about halfway up on my leg. I mean, on, on my calf of my leg, about seven or eight inches with, with all that sediment, and muddy water. That, that what amazes me how strong that water was. I mean, I figure, well, it's cheaper for me to buy more lawn furniture than to buy me. <laughs> so I got out of the water. <laughs> Absolutely. So I, yeah, because I can appreciate, Jerry, what you did there, you know, putting your life on the line there to rescue people because you're raging rivers and things of that nature. I mean, that was, you mentioned the Salt River. My goodness gracious, that's some narrow, they got some very narrow places in there, brother. Yep. Mm-hmm. It's a long, fast moving river uh, at times, and at other times, it's very gentle. So, yeah, but you know, uh, yeah, it's, it's amazing. Oh yeah. I was telling people from time to time when I was with the Arizona guard, we were flying from Phoenix up to, uh, I'm trying to think of the place we were going to is a little military place up there. Uh, I wasn't Redstone, that's in Alabama. But anyway, I, we we're going to get on these, these Hueys. And I saw this guy, Viet, this pilot, he was a Vietnam veteran, had a combat patch on his right shoulder. And me being a Vietnam veteran, I walked over and asked him, said, we'll be flying over Oak Creek Canyon. He says, oh, yeah. I said, man, I've been wanting to see that from there. He says, no problem. I said, okay. And that's that was the conversation. So we're flying along in for, formation. You know, we're not, you know, even, but we're kind of stacked flying along there. And he turned around and he pointed like that. So I'm looking and I see these red and orange streaks coming up in the horizon. And he broke the formation, just brought that thing down. And it was a beautiful sight. And everybody in the chopper is going like, wow. I said, man, you know, you know what this would cost in real life if you paid for this and they're paying us to do this. <laughs> and then after we passed over, we went back up in formation and landed. And I said, we landed up there and I said, uh, wow. I said, man, thank you. That was one heck of a ride. And he saw my pleasure. I enjoyed it doing it for you guys, you know, <laughs> but it was the, the, 
the beauty of seeing Arizona. And, and Jerry, you might be able to help me on this because I tell people as much as I've flown in helicopters over Arizona, I don't think there's any place in Arizona that you can stand and not see mountains somewhere. <laughs> I mean, it's just, they're, they're, they're just there, you know, front of you, behind you, backs, you know, just, just there. That's right. Yeah. You even take Yuma, which is. Really oh, yeah. Best, and you can oh, yeah. See, you know, yeah, you sure can. I wouldn't get anywhere else. Yeah. Love yeah. That. Oh, yeah, Absolutely. <laughs> And, and Donna, you know, I love the way that you were telling me about Jerry. She, she says, you wait till you hear his story. I mean, you just wait to hear the, some of the things he did. And I started reading. I'm going like, oh, my gosh, this guy's not only a hero, he's a living legend. And oh, my goodness. I mean, the things that he did was just, uh, you know, and Jerry, you just did that because of the passion of the person in their hour of need, didn't you? From its heart. From your heart. You didn't even think about it. You just did it from your heart. I, I often wonder, I, but I know, uh, I often wonder how I made it through all of that. And uh, God had a purpose. And uh, that's the only way I can explain some of the things that we got away with. So oh, I yeah. I, uh, I'm happy to be here. Sure, you bet. Is I'm a firm believer that God will take someone and their gifts and their talents and put them in a place to say, now you're going to do what I want you to do for the benefit of others to be a blessing to others. And that's what you did. I mean, and you not only did it, you did it in style. I mean, you just, you know, there was, you know, I mean, I don't know a better word to say. Than, well, I think, I think Barry Water, go ahead. Go ahead. Hmm. Well, one of the things I, I can tell you is I got to keep the helicopter at home for 20 years. I had a little ranch out in uh, Cape Creek, just north of Phoenix. Mm -hmm. And I kept the helicopter right. at home for my whole career. And that's why at 3 o'clock in the morning, if they called, wham, I was gone. And, uh, wow. And that's, right. that's live TV. We, we scooped mm. them. <laughs> it was really simple. Did you ever hop in and go down to the Circle K or anything? <laughs> Con <laughs> local, local convenience my dentist, store. <laughs> my dentist had a big field. My doctor had a big field. And uh, if uh, if I couldn't land it, I didn't go to it. So mm. uh, I even had a grocery store that I was stopping at. And uh, my wife said, hey, Jerry, pick up a, pick up a steaks. I can land at a little place and uh, pick them up and home and wow. uh, you, wouldn't get, you wouldn't get away with that today no. yeah i bet so and here yeah. i was donna teasing about taking the helicopter down to the convenience store <laughs> <laughs> well tease yeah. no more it's a reality well you know yeah. one of the things i'd like to talk about real quick gentlemen is that jerry you were the first and i have it written down on my notes here you were the first news helicopter pilot in Arizona to accept the Harmon Trophy Award from President Ronald Reagan in 1981. I tell you, the biggest thrill of my life was walking in and meeting Ronald Reagan. Uh, I received that, that award, and then I also got a Ronald Reagan tie, a clip tie. And um, what else? Oh, I got a little jar of jelly beans. Ronald Reagan, mm -hmm. jelly bean fanatic. Well, yes, I want to explain. I, yeah, absolutely. I'd like to explain for the for the folks who don't know what the uh, Harmon Trophy is. It is a set of three international trophies to be awarded annually to the world's most outstanding aviator. Only three a year. So that that is uh, unbelievable, and congratulations on that. I mean, I know you won it a, a couple of years ago, but, you know, it's uh, on behalf of Arizona and growing up and watching what you, you've done to, you know, regardless of your own life and, and risk of that, you've gone out and helped people in so many ways. So, you know, congratulations and thank you because it is amazing, your, your life. It truly is. 
what an honor it is, Jerry, to be able to have you on our show and, and talk to you about all these crazy, wonderful, beautiful things that you've done. And, and, and I think that's a good description. They were crazy, wonderful, and beautiful all at the same time. <laughs> well, um, you know, that little helicopter, they are so amazing. They go forward, sideways, backwards, straight up, straight down. And in today's technology, they even go upside down. So, Whoa. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's amazing. Because <laughs> during your uh, their time there, I imagine you were, you know, in, in addition to being a local celebrity, I imagine you had a lot of people that, you know, asked for your autograph and things of this nature. Is that right? Want to have yeah, pictures with you and all? That's right. It bothered me to begin with because I never even thought about being a celebrity. But oh, you know, yeah. One day, one day I was with Barry Goldwater and some kids came up and said something nasty to him. And I jumped all over them. And when they left, Barry said, Jerry, those kids will remember you all through their adult life and they won't like you. And <laughs> you know what? Uh, he was such a mentor to teach me, show me. I watched. Uh, he, he, he was just a great man with people. Mm. So got a lot of help. A lot of people uh, helped me and uh, very, very proud. Oh, yeah. Rightly so. You know, Donna, I, I tell you, reading about Jerry and and all the things that you told me about, I mean, she was bragging on you and Jerry, she was bragging on you. And I mean, I thought was, you know, maybe, she, you know, maybe she, you're, you were paying her to brag on you. But I see now she was telling me the truth. <laughs> I tell you, I just love helicopters and here on my desk. Hello? <laughs> Yeah. I love that. I love that. that that's amazing. That's you know, awesome. it's yeah. You're to start your little little toy line there of helicopters. You know, <laughs> yeah, that that'd be really great, wouldn't it? Yeah, it would. Mm -hmm. I have this little apartment here at the senior center, and I have every one of my helicopter models and everything that I did on uh, on TV. I I kept models. Mm -hmm. Pictures. Nice. Mm -hmm. And now, as an old guy, I can sit back and I'd like to live in the day that's gone by. And that yeah. might be, you know, why not? Uh, everything in this apartment is something that somebody either gave me or I earned. Every wall is covered. And um, it might, just, I, I might sound like a little bit of a weirdo, but I like it. I love it. Oh, yeah. Because that's that's part of your life. That's who you are. I mean, that's yeah. That's what's sewn in the fabric of your soul, Jerry. Yeah, that's that's in your DNA. How did you first get started and interested in, in being a helicopter pilot? How did that come about? Uh, I met a helicopter pilot when I was working up in uh, Montana. I was doing some construction work up there for my dad, and mm -hmm. my dad uh, hired a helicopter to come in and do some things. A guy took me for a ride. And I knew, I knew right then and there that that's what I wanted to do. How is it? Say again. And that was it. You were hooked for life. That's it. No regrets. Yeah. I would do some things different, but no regrets. Sure, sure. I understand. And Donna mentioned earlier about your three books. You talked about your first book. What's the other two books that you've written? I don't know. I, I don't have just but one. Just have the one, okay. All right. It's, it's and, 560 pages. Oh, okay. <laughs> and when I sat down to write it, I thought, oh, I hope I have enough material to write it. And uh, it's pretty thick. You know, that's one thing that we uh, tell people: they should write a book because their life is so much stranger than any kind of fiction could ever be. And uh, I was teasing Amen. a guy that. I was teasing a guy, and he he didn't get the joke. I says, I'm going to write a book because I've done a lot of things in my life. You know, I'm 72. And I says, you know, this my my life is based on a true story. And I just stopped and looked at him, and he's kind of like, oh, okay, you know. <laughs> it was a joke, and he didn't get it, poor guy. <laughs> I, 
You know, but writing about your your life and the things that you went through, what you overcame, you know, the 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 tears you shed, the skint knees, that sort of thing. That's how people can relate to you. They can. That's how people connect to you because they can say this person's not phony. This person's for real. Right. And, and Jerry, I'm going to share this with you because growing up, my dad had two favorite sayings and i heard these more than once growing up one of his sayings was he said son that looks like a good way for you to skin your ignorance (laughs) (laughs) and when he used that phrase my dad whatever he said you never had to walk away and scratch your head and the second phrase that i heard more than once i'll be honest was that he'd look at me and he says son Exactly when did that seem like a good idea to you? <laughs> but when you share things in your life that fit inside that category in a book, that's what people want to read about. That's what makes it interesting. And, you know, like I say, you know, people want to connect with you. And, you know, seeing you on TV and, and you being such a celebrity there in Arizona and people, you, you had a wow factor about you, my man. I mean, Donna was wild about you from seven years of age on. She still is. <laughs> Thank you, Donna. I hope you are most welcome. <laughs> you are but, most welcome. So but, what is your favorite story, Jerry? Your favorite uh, story in the helicopter? You've got to have one that stands out above all others. Well, I think I've already told you that one, and that was, uh, well, there was another one, too. Uh, Barry Goldwater and I, during uh, one of his campaigns, we were going from Tucson down to uh, Cells, and which is right on mm-hmm. the Mexican border. It's right. also right. right on the uh, gunnery range. Remember that, the gunnery range. And right. uh, we left Tucson. We were running behind. Uh, Barry had a dinner to speak at, and uh, we had to fly right straight through the uh, gunnery range to get to uh, south, and uh, uh, the controller said, We have active uh, jets flying, uh, you can't go through the gunnery range. And Barry looked at me and he says, Tell them we're in a hurry and I need to get there. So I told him, They said, Sorry, we're so Barry reached up, turned off the radio, and said, Go direct. I got in a lot of trouble over that, but he got me out. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness wow. but then, you know we got away with a lot more back then than we do now and helicopters oh, yeah. are helicopters are not the oddity that they were when they first started mm-hmm. you know, I could right. land anywhere and I did land anywhere I, when, we, when we went out mm-hmm. for a TV story if we were going to somebody's ranch or house or something we'd go out mm-hmm. there and land if there was room and Everybody loved it because oh, helicopter yeah. is such a oddity. So, you know, you know, Donna and and Jerry. When I was thinking about you earlier, and I was going to mention this earlier, but I forgot. But there was a uh, TV movie or TV show, and it starred D- David Jansen. It was called "The Birds of Prey." P R E Y, and and that was a similar story. He was a uh, just a pilot for a a helicopter pilot for I think a TV station or something and the police are saying yeah they got to call him back but then they they, they're saying we we got to do that but we're hoping he can just continue on chasing these guys these bad guys and that's exactly what he did and uh, oh yeah I did too it's one of my favorite movies because I was a huge fan of David Jensen he was a star of a great TV series that I really enjoyed The Fugitive oh sure uh, Oh, yeah. And we got another comment from uh, Christopher Jeffries. He says it's now called, he talked about the gunnery range. He says it's now called Barry Goldwater Gunnery Range. (laughs) (laughs) So now that you guys, not only did you guys go through there, he left his name on the place. (laughs) You know, we appreciate, we appreciate those tidbits of information that we didn't know. So thank yeah. you so much, Christopher, for and and Dave for taking a moment and writing in and and you know expressing your your opinions and on Jerry and and about the gunnery range because 
I didn't know that it was now called the Barry Gold Water Gunnery Range. Would you I like didn't either. Yeah. I, I'd like to tell you something funny. Sure. The, uh, the guy who called in the Gunnery Range, Christopher Jeffries, that's my son in law. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so glad you're out there, Jeff. So for, uh, well, you're... Only for the son in law. <laughs> Yeah, I tell you, it's it's really it's really nice though for him to, to share that with us because we were able to share it with others across. And this this uh, video here, we will edit it the, after the broadcast, and we'll get it uploaded tonight. Uh, and it'll be on a YouTube link on our YouTube channel, our personal channel. And I'll make sure you get the link so that you'll be able to you know share that YouTube link with others because it's real easy to do that. It's not complicated. And of course, we're being broadcast all over the world on millions of devices. And uh, it's just a wonderful opportunity to be here and have you share your message and get it out there with others. And, and I know Donna's already made the note. We come to Phoenix and we got Marty Haggard out there. Uh, we're going to we're going to have some fun, brother. We're going to have some fun. Oh, yeah. and, and Jerry, yeah, I, I, tell Marty I made Marty Haggard promise me he's going to come out to Phoenix. And, she and did. I did. Yeah, she did. She she says, Marty, you're you're coming to Phoenix. He said, Okay, Donna. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, she pulled rank right. on him, and, and you know me too. So and and, yeah. and and Marty lives over in Louisiana. I live here in Texas. He said, Well, Jim, you're coming too, aren't you? I said, Yep, yep. Because you know, if Donna <laughs> says we're going to Phoenix, we're going to Phoenix. So let's just pack our bags and go and hush. <laughs> Well, that government, Marty made me cry three times on air. <laughs> well, I tell you, I, I love that Texas. Oh, yeah. You know, I worked there for the Army uh, during the Vietnam thing uh, in Fort Walters. Fort Walters, yeah. Well, that's that's, that's where they helicopter did helicopter training. training. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, I was in the And and I lived in Weatherford, love Weatherford. Oh, so. yeah. Yeah. I live in a little town called Brenham. That's halfway between Houston and Austin. But what Brenham is known for, and when I tell people, it's the home of Blue Bell ice cream. And they go, oh, yeah, Blue Bell ice cream. Yeah. You know, and it's yeah. uh, it, that, that's just the home of it. It really is. That's where it all started. And we've got, Donna, we got about a minute left. Uh, you know, I'd like for you to say, you and Jerry share anything you'd like with people. And I know Jerry would just say, if there's something you want to do, just get up and go for it. I mean, what do you got to lose, right? <laughs> That's right. I would leave uh, one thing that I was, was taught, and that was to never give up. Mm -hmm. and that's what I would tell your listeners is no matter what you're involved in, never give up. Amen. That, uh, that's and what just because life knocks you down, yeah. just get up and say, Okay, that was it. Is that all you got? Because watch this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, Donna, I really want to. I really want to thank you for for being such a big fan. I I, I really am grateful. I'm honored to be on your show, uh, Jim and Donna, and um, I'm going to look forward to you coming here to Arizona. And uh, who is that again? Merle Haggard. <laughs> Marty Haggard, his son. Merle's Marty, yeah. son. His Marty, oldest son. I Marty's oldest son. I flew Merle a couple of times when he came to Phoenix, and, uh, and then I also flew him at the wedding where we lived. Yeah. Perfect. Well, what she we'll do, what we'll do there, since you flew Merle around, we'll have Marty drop chauffeur you around. <laughs> <laughs> That's not good. Oh yeah, it really is, and you know, it's what, such one, a of the, one of the neatest things about uh, my career was flying Barry to. Uh, Burbank to Hollywood, and we, I met so many stars. He'd go on the Dinah Shore show and on all kinds of different uh, uh, TV shows. He was very mm -hmm. popular. And one, of, and one of the celebrities I met was a guy by the name of Jonathan Winters. Remember him? Oh, yeah. He, oh, yeah. Yeah. And he says, Jerry, what do you do? And I said, Well, I'm a helicopter pilot. And he goes, Starts making a helicopter sound. And he was the funniest guy I ever met. So, oh, my goodness. Well, like, <laughs> 
Ladies and gentlemen, our time is gone. We don't even have time to hardly say anything other than thank you so much for tuning in, Jerry. Thank you so much for being here, Jerry. my man. And you're such a hoot. We, we, we're going to sometime in the future, we're going to get we get out there to Arizona. We're going to do a live show and you're going to be there with us, my man. We're going to you're going to be there with us. We appreciate you. And on behalf of Donna, thank you so much for tuning in. We'll see you tomorrow. Take care, everyone. Bye bye.